I recently got invited to be a guest on another podcast. And when the host asked me, what is my goal with this podcast? I shared with her that I know that I'm supposed to have like a more ambitious, like business focus goal for my podcast. But the truth is when I created this podcast, my idea is just to create a space where we can feel a little bit less alone in our adulting journey. And I had this vision that you are going to be a part of growing old with me. So right now, as I'm going through my wedding planning season, I took you guys along in my wedding diaries. And I believe that as I go through my entrepreneurship journey, I'll be sharing with you more about that. And eventually say one day, who knows, maybe I'll become a parent or I seriously am considering becoming a porn instead, like, you know, P-A-W, porn, because the idea of having a pet over a human child is becoming more and more enticing for me. And, but, but that's another topic for another day. But yeah, so I had this vision where you will be growing old together with me along in this journey. And I really cannot wait for like my 500th episode or my 1000th episode where we talk about different seasons that we go through in our life. And we look back into this episode because we are on episode 50 today. And I'm already so proud and excited to be a part of this. And I just wanted to invite invite you to celebrate this little milestone of mine and I just want to you know thank you for being a part of this journey with me or if you are new to this podcast welcome and I'm excited to have you to journey along with us so while we are celebrating something exciting today I do want to also acknowledge that this episode is a little bit more on the heavier side because we will be talking about fear and anxiety because as much as this is an exciting milestone that I'm going through, the truth is, in my personal life, I am going through anxiety and there are a lot of fear that I'm facing and that is life. We will have good things happening. Like I've been celebrating a lot of friends' weddings and stuff like that. But I am also going through anxiety dealing with other stuff that are going on in my life. So um, I am quite new to dealing with anxiety. I know I've talked about feeling anxious and overwhelmed on this podcast before, but I've only recently started getting anxiety attacks that made me feel really, really uncomfortable. And honestly, I'm still kind of learning to go through it. But because I'm someone who is also quite like a mental health advocate because I've dealt with depression and PTSD before, so... The concept of anxiety isn't too scary for me. And because I'm so self-aware of my physical symptoms, like how I feel all the time, I noticed it very quickly and I've been kind of just coping through with it. And in this episode, I kind of just want to walk you through how I've been learning to cope with this anxiety attacks that I've been having Um, whilst you trying to move forward towards where I want to be in life. So I want to first emphasize that I am not a mental health expert. I am sharing with you my experience as someone who is currently going through this and I'm only sharing with you what has worked for me. And I... Like my intention is really to just normalize this conversation because I feel like this is something that our generation would often face. Number one, because this conversation is more openly discussed about so we can talk about and learn to heal from it. And number two, I think it's just our lifestyle. Like we are made to be more ambitious and we have a lot more information coming our way because of technology and It's just a general problem that everyone is facing. And I honestly want to believe that 
as much as it can become a mental illness that is that needs medical intervention, I also feel that there will be coping strategies that we can first try to use to cope with before trying to get intervention from a therapist or a doctor eventually. So how I realized that I started getting anxiety attacks, it's the physical symptoms of it. I think it was earlier this month when one of the days I just really had really short breath and my heart was beating really fast. And honestly, in the past three or four weeks, I've been dealing a lot with stomach aches and headaches. And I want to kind of pinpoint a physical problem that might be causing it. Like, I want to blame the diet that I'm having and all that, but I know in my heart that there is a bigger issue going on and that's when I kind of realized that I think it's anxiety and so I guess like I'm just going to start by sharing with you how I've been trying to cope when I noticed that my stomach is getting like clenching up and it's feeling a lot more uncomfortable and my headaches number one is you know breathing Um, I've attended quite a few like breathing workshop kind of stuff and I've also practiced meditation in the past three years. So breathing is something that I've learned that when you are able to consciously control your breath, you will be able to cope better to signal your brain and the nervous system to just slow down and function better. So it's kind of like a reverse I want to say reverse psychology, but it's not really psychology. But you know how when you are nervous or when you are put on flight or fight mode, right? Your heartbeat is going to beat faster and your breath goes shorter. So on, so why conscious breathing might be able to help you is because when you force your breath to go slower you are in a way forcing your heartbeat and your the rest of your nervous system to slow down as well. So, I mean, I'm not a breathing expert over here. I have been thinking about getting a certification, but that's kind of like the scientific explanation of it. The idea is that when you are able to consciously focus on your breath and slow down your breath, you are actually able to signal your body that you are currently not in danger. Because when anxiety happens, it's usually because your brain is living in all these worries and future that you are concerned about, right? And it's signaling that it's in danger, that you are worried, that you need to protect yourself. That's why everything is going very fast. So when you are able to just slow down your breath, to just inhale and exhale... It tells your brain that actually you're not really in danger. Your brain just thinks that it is in danger. So there has been a lot of conscious reading happening in the past couple weeks because I had to really consciously tell my brain that, hey, we are not in danger. We can cope through this. So being able to just do that has helped me a lot. And another thing that I've learned, and this was a technique that a counselor has taught me before when I had depression, um, was this 5 4 3 2 1 grounding exercise. And I want to first start by explaining to you why do we want to work on a grounding exercise, right? The idea is this when you are overly thinking about your past and too hung up on it and you're not able to move past it, usually that is the reason that you could potentially get depression. And anxiety is on the opposite spectrum. It's usually because that you are overly worried about what would be coming next. You are constantly scared. You are constantly worried, which is why the idea is to really help you to ground back to the present because when you are living in a now, when you are living in a present, you would notice that actually everything is still okay. You are still in a safe environment. 
you are still sitting on your chair right now or maybe you are driving and listening to this podcast. And when you are so conscious and are present, again, it signals your brain that you are not in danger. So one thing you can do when you notice that you are starting to feel anxious, a very simple exercise is this exercise. It's called 54321 grounding exercise. And basically it is to make good use of our five senses to help us bring back to the present. So you want to identify the five things that you can see. So right now, as I'm recording this episode, the five things that I can see is the mic on my hand and my other hand over here and my laptop over here. I can see the camera and what's the fifth thing? Oh, this orange pillow that's sitting right next to me. And then the four things that you can touch. So number one, my mic is on my hand. Number two, I can actually feel my pants on my forearms. Number three, I can feel the pillow on my hand. And number four, my feet can feel the, the sofa under my legs. Number three, the three things you can hear. So I can actually hear my voice on my earphones here on a monitor. And because this thing's noise cancelling is quite well, so it's a little bit harder to identify. But I, okay, I can actually hear the fan spinning around. And there's just a little bit of like the city bustle outside. Like I can hear a motorbike just drove past on the outside. So that's the three things that I can hear. Two things that you can smell. I actually lit up a candle over here, so it's smelling really good in my home. And what's the other thing that I can smell? Huh. Okay, I'm struggling a little bit over here. And then the one thing is the one thing that you can taste. And honestly, I just can taste my mouth because I just had a banana smoothie and there's some chia seeds stuck around my teeth so I can kind of taste it but you get the idea of it so when you are so aware of the senses that you are experiencing it really brings you back it really grounds you back to this exact moment and again this is going to help remind you that you are here you are not in the space of what you are worrying about. You are safe and all and everything will eventually be okay. That's what I always tell myself. One more thing that you can also do to just very quickly ground yourself back to the present is just to check the date and the time. So I remember just yesterday or two days ago when I was going out for dinner with Kevin, the anxiety was starting to kick in again. Like my heartbeat was very fast and I was getting a headache in the car. We were just going out for dinner with our friends and I'm still worried about my job and everything else, right? And I just like look at my phone and I was like, okay, what's the date today? Okay, it's October 19th and it is 6 p.m. right now we are all right like I'm just here I'm here with Kevin I'm here in the car we're going for dinner whatever I'm worried about about my job it will all eventually work out well so yeah number one just being conscious of slowing down your breath. There are actually a lot of breathing techniques, but eventually we can have another episode of that. But just slowing down your breath in general, that is going to help you a lot. And number two, just ground yourself back to the present. You can do the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 um, grounding exercise, or you can also just be conscious of the date and time and where you are and remind yourself that you are back in the present. So these are some basic techniques that has helped me to just physically signal my brain that we are all right. And then there comes the bigger, deeper work that you need to do. Because usually when it comes to dealing with anxiety or depression or whatever it is that is kind of like a bigger mental health issue, there are usually a deeper rooted problem that you are facing. And it is going to require quite some work for you to kind of identify what exactly 
is causing this problem? What exactly is leading for you to have these thoughts and these worries? And then you are able to kind of like work through it, right? So I have become a lot more spiritual in the last couple of years. And that's because I feel like I've just been going through this transition in my life, uh, figuring out what exactly do I want in my life? How do I want the outlook of my life to be like? And what's my purpose? Bigger questions like that, right? And a few things that I've been consciously doing a lot more and bringing back to my routine is number one, doing a lot of self-reflection and coaching. Like I've just been writing a little bit more. I would just open up a blank page on my Notion and just start journaling. I would just start by asking myself, how am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? What do I think is causing these problems? Stuff like that. A lot of conversations with myself. I've also started praying a lot more. And besides that, I've also kind of tried to pull back my habit of meditating early in the morning again. So for the past two years, I've been quite good in maintaining the habit of meditating almost every morning. But in this past year, like in year 2024, I think I've just been a little bit more busy and I've been sleeping a lot later because I would like to consider that I'm juggling almost like three full-time jobs right now. So I have my day job, I have my podcast and I'm starting an online business. So with all these things coming up, I've been sleeping a lot later and I've tried to prioritize my sleep and that has kind of eat into my meditation time. But I realized that the meditation part is actually very important. And if you are not someone who is used to meditating, you can just think of it as, as scheduling a conscious thinking time. Okay, just time for you to kind of just connect with yourself to give yourself a breathing space to think and to be aware and to tune into how you are feeling about everything. Um, so I started to kind of force myself into this habit again. I think it is very important. And during this processes, right, I have learned that I think I just have too much on my plate. Right, I think that is the biggest problem that I was having and that's kind of like leading up to this anxiety and all that, right? And so from this realization then, I was able to kind of figure out what are some things that I'm able to delegate or eliminate from my to-do list. So I'm basically slowly weeding out the things that I don't exactly need to do or worry about so that I can have more breathing space to slowly move forward. So you see, we've done the basic work of just grounding back to the present and then we do the deeper works of asking ourselves what are the problems that we are facing and then the next step was to really read out what are the things that we cannot worry about right now. So one thing that I've been doing this past month or this past couple, two months maybe, is to hire a part-time mate, okay? This has actually surprisingly helped taking out a lot of, a huge load from my mental space because... Kevin and I, my fiancé and I, we live together. And even though I had this notion board that helps us to kind of keep track of the house chores that we need to do, and Kevin has been great in cooperating with me to just clean up the house, but the truth is we both don't like cleaning up, okay? I've always dreamed of not having to clean my house myself. And with so much going on in my head in the past month. I told Kevin like, hey, I just don't want to worry about cleaning up anymore. Can we get a part-time mate coming in every two weeks? That will help kind of lighten up the load a lot. And the very first time that I had the part-time mate over and after she left, I felt so happy. Like it's funny because I was, 
I felt bad at first for like, oh, paying people to clean up my house for myself. But that load that was lifted off me made me realize that this money is so worth spending. But again, because we kind of want to spend our money wisely as well. So we are only doing it every other weeks and we are doing the light cleaning ourselves. And I think it works for us. But yeah, like delegating what you are able to delegate and to just not worrying about it that helps and besides that you might also notice that I didn't have a new episode on my podcast in the past two weeks and that's also because like mentally I just didn't have the space to come up with another episode because there were two weddings that we are attending in the past weeks and I really wanted to be present over there and like I said I've been dealing with anxiety I just didn't have the mental capacity that allows me to create a good content so I also just told myself that it is okay to not post on my podcast for two weeks because I know that my audience care more about having a good quality episode over the fact that, you know, should I be showing up every single week even if I don't feel like it. So... And, and on top of that, um, if you are following me on Instagram, I have also kind of like just not posted as much as I would like. So previously, I would kind of aim to post like about three posts in a week. And currently, I've not posted a feed post for over a week now. I honestly don't know how would that affect the algorithm and if my upcoming posts would be affected and stuff like that. But that also comes from an understanding of knowing what is my focus and what is my game plan. So I know like, you know, delegating and eliminating tasks may sound like you are giving up on things, but You know, this process of really going inwards and asking myself questions has also kind of helped me to realize that my focus of becoming a content creator has shifted from what I thought it was in the past few years. So previously, a lot of my content focus is on Instagram because that is the platform that I am most active on. And if you are looking purely on the number of followers, that is the platform that I have the most followers right now. But that is before I decided to start a podcast and, you know, create long form content like this. And after creating the past 50 episodes, it is safe to say that I really do enjoy creating long form content over short form content like on Instagram or on TikTok. And the strategy for growing, you know, long form content is very different from growing a short form content. And so I am in a season of kind of switching my focus. And this is a season that is going to require some transition. So I need to let go of that fear that I might be irrelevant on my Instagram. And, you know, just trust that this is a move and a transition that I need to go through in order for me to grow in the long term. And this comes with a lot of trust in knowing that this is the right thing. Right. And um, so there are quite a few things that I am going to do moving forward. One of it is something that I'm very excited to share with you. I am going to build this community element to this podcast. And honestly, when I created this podcast, it has community has always been the keyword. In fact, it was creating a community before creating a podcast. Like the very first idea that I have is that I want to build a community for people to feel less alone in this personal growth journey. And then that was when I realized that if I want to talk in depth about these topics that we talk about and discuss about on this podcast, I need to create long form content. And that was how I decided to choose podcast as a platform. And I've been talking about this community element for so long, 
but I have let my fear stop me from actually doing something. Sure, in this past year and a half, I've started conversations with friends and strangers on the internet about these topics that I discuss about on my podcast. But I was too afraid of failure to even take an action to create an actual community, if that makes sense. Because I was worried that if I were to create a space for us to talk and to discuss about things, what if no one shows up? I would feel so disappointed. And so I've been putting off this idea for the longest time, but I've decided that, you know, it's time for me to move forward. And honestly, you guys are my safest space on the internet. I've never felt so comfortable talking about all this problem anywhere else. And that's because you've all made me feel really safe in this personal growth journey. And it took me a while to kind of like digest it to myself that even if the process of creating this community fails, that is something that I can talk to you about too. And I want to be a great example of doing things despite of the fear, doing things despite of the anxiety that comes with it, doing things despite knowing that it might potentially fail one day. And so I have to do it. Um, and, and I'm seeing it in a very positive light. I don't feel like I'm being forced into doing it. I don't feel like I'm being forced to show up on my podcast even when I'm feeling anxiety. In fact, it was like maybe a few days ago when I was literally on the verge of tearing up, sitting on my desk over anxiety again um, because I felt like, oh, I've not showed up on my Instagram for a week. I've not showed up on my podcast for two weeks. Like that anxiety was there. And I just took out my phone and just recorded something thinking that I'm talking to you and in that process that two minutes video that I was just talking to myself that's when I realized ah oh, this is my safe space on the internet that that allows me to share my thought and also heal myself in the process and it's crazy because I feel like I'm just sitting down here talking to myself looking into my notes and looking into my camera but I really do feel that sense of community and support that I get for bringing you along in this personal growth journey. So I'm going to tease you guys a little bit um, that I am very excited to kind of launch a community element to this podcast in two weeks time. Um, and I am really excited to bring you guys along the journey. Again, whether or not it succeeds or fail. It depends on you. So I really hope that you're excited to be a part of that journey. And coming back to this episode, right? Anxiety is really uncomfortable. And I am still co constantly dealing with it. It's kind of like a cycle. It's not like you cope with it and, and you are well immediately. It comes and goes there will be days where I would suddenly get really quick heartbeat and my stomach aches. But through the basic coping strategies that I shared with you, it helped me to kind of slow down. And, you know, through the constant just self-awareness and self-consciousness to look deeper into finding the answers, it helped a lot. And it's also through like delegating and through talking to my friends and my partners about it where I'm slowly able to just keep on moving forward. Like I said at the start of this episode, this is something that I am still struggling with. I, I believe that life kind of goes on as well. We still have the bills to pay. I still have a wedding to plan. I still have a marriage to look forward to. And I know that this is just a season that I have to go through. 
I, and I know that you might be going through something similar or maybe one day you might be going through something similar. And that is why I felt the need to share my experience on this podcast. And I hope that this sharing helps you feel a little bit less alone in your adulting journey. And I guess that's the end of this episode. I really look forward to see you in the next episode. And I'm also even more excited to welcome you into our community space in two weeks time and with that this is goodbye